What's the one snack that's been in the market for more than a hundred years, but still is the first thing that the majority of people would reach out for? That's right, people. We're talking about Cheez-Its. Easily one of the most iconic and best parts of American culture. These crispy treats are one of the most loved snacks of all time. But have you ever wondered how they make it? We're sure a lot of people have tried to make their Cheez-Its at home, but it just never tastes the same. What's the secret? Any special ingredient? Well, you're at the right place because we're gonna tell you all of this and so much more. So without further ado, let's get started. Manufacturing. Besides being famous for some of the best automobile industries in the world, Michigan has one more thing to be proud of. That's right, folks, Cheez-Its. The Kellogg's factory in Battle Creek is easily one of the biggest suppliers of mouth-watering snacks. Anyways, back to the Kellogg's factory in Michigan. Churning around 200 million Cheez-Its every year, this factory is one of the best of its kind. Not only the best, but also the oldest. That's right, folks. It's been more than a century since these puffy and airy cheese squares became a part of the market. What is it that gives them their addictive, salty, and buttery aftertaste? Well, let's take a look at the process to find out. The Ingredients Where does it start? How is the most beloved snack of America born? Well, just like any other cracker, the life of Cheez-Its starts from the dough. And not just any dough. The starting dough for Cheez-Its is probably heavier than the furniture in our houses. After kneading it mechanically, the next ingredient is added. Can you guess what it is? Not salt, not pepper, not anything else. Cheese. A lot of cheese. You might be wondering how much cheese is a lot of cheese. Well, you see, entire blocks of cheese are added to the dough. And the blocks are anything but tiny. Each giant block of cheese easily weighs around 500 pounds. But wait, if one block is like 500 pounds, how much cheese do they even use? Well, the yearly consumption of cheese by the Kellogg factory might shock you, but it's around a jaw-dropping estimate of 30 million pounds. But have you ever wondered what type of cheese is used in the world-famous Cheez-Its? Well, it's a combination of cheddar, of course, and skim milk cheese. You know about the cheddar, but how much skim milk cheese is used? Roughly guessing, the factory uses 23 million pounds of skim milk cheese every year. Wow, that's like equal to the milk of around 15,000 cows. Moving on from those calculations, the next step is mixing the cheese with the dough. But how do they do that? Well, for starters, they don't just dump the giant block of cheese on top of the dough with a thump. Instead, the block goes through a mincing machine that releases incredibly long cheese spirals. Besides lots of cheddar and skim milk cheese, the primary ingredient of the legendary Cheez-Its is in fact vegetable oil and the flour. Anyways, after adding lots and lots of cheese to the mix, the dough is mixed with the cheese. And since mixing the humongous dough by hand is pretty much impossible, a special machine is used. But that's not quick either. The machine takes its sweet time too. After mincing and mixing the ingredients for 15 minutes, the machine stops and the dough moves to the proofing room. The proofing room. As serious as it might sound, the proofing room is just a place where the dough is kept for some time. After around 24 hours, when it is fully fermented and the flavors have developed and blended perfectly, it's time to say goodbye to the proofing room. Now, our dough is ready for the next step. You know that one event in life that changes you forever? In the life of a Cheez-Its, it's when they have to go through the cutter. From soft and mushy dough that's been fermented for a whole day to even and extremely thin sheets, the roller puts the right amount of pressure on it. After it's perfectly flat and even and the cutter cuts them into their perfect little square shape, but, but wait, are they really square shaped? Buggle up, folks. Your life's about to be changed with our next revelation. The Shape of Cheez-Its our deepest condolences to all those people who thought Cheez-Its were square-shaped. You've been kept in the dark for your entire life. One of the most iconic things about the Cheez-Its was its shape. But according to precise measurements, it's not a square. That's right, folks. The world-famous cheesy crackers 
are 26 by 24 milliliters. A square has four equal sides. And guess what shape these crackers are? That's right, just by two millimeters, the crackers are rectangular in shape. Moving on, another important question. What do you think give Cheez-Its their legendary, addictive, and just perfectly balanced flavor? The flavor of Cheez-Its. Unlike what majority of Cheez-It lovers think, the cheese doesn't give it the flavor everyone loves it for. Yes, cheese is one of the most essential ingredients of the recipe, but there is one more thing that gives Cheez-Its the perfect aroma, color, and taste that it's famous for. You might be wondering what that ingredient is. Thousands of people try to make their own Cheez-Its at home but fail to get the taste. It's all because of paprika. That's right, folks. The perfect, slightly orange, yet lovely golden color is not obtained by baking the cheese perfectly. It's because of paprika. While kneading the dough, along with other additions, lots and lots of paprika is added. And let's just say that after being fermented for about 24 hours with the dough, the paprika pretty much puts the flavor of the entire treat together. And yes, the lovely orange and slight golden color are also because of the paprika, not the baked cheese. You've been lied to. On the brighter side, after being fermented for 24 hours and flattened up real nice, the dough goes through a cutter. And of course, the iconic cheese it cut is given at that very time. Now that we've talked about the insanely huge amount of ingredients used for making Cheez-Its, the kneading of the dough, fermentation, spices, and printing patterns, let's move on to the final steps. Baking the Cheez-Its. Bet no one's surprised there. After being separated into a million individual crackers, the Cheez-Its are brought to an oven where they are baked for a specific amount of time. And you might be wondering how big the oven is. Well, not a lot, just around 300 meters long, to put it plainly, it's bigger than a football field. And by the time they're done, they have the perfect amount of crunch, airness, and lightness to them. But there's still one huge sheet, though. So how does it get broken into particularly shaped and equally sized crackers? Well, no one does it. Basically, the belt they're moving on starts shaking violently, kind of like an earthquake. And because of the intensity of the movement, the sheet starts to fall apart and the patterns that have already been embedded into the sheet becomes its edges. After that, salt is sprinkled on the belt in motion, and every piece gets an adequate amount of seasoning on it. The singular hole in the center. Another extremely particular and signature characteristic of a Cheez-It, the single hole in the middle, also has a very important reason behind it. That's right, folks. Everything about this awesome snack is a mystery and has a logic behind it. Talking about the one tiny hole in the middle, well, it's very important for the signature cheese its crispiness and airness. Bonus points because it just looks very good and pretty much puts together the entire appearance of America's most beloved cracker. All right, folks, that's all for today. Click on one of the videos on your screen right now, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.